Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for the invitation of being here today. It's a pleasure for me to be here in Ottawa today. I've been here a whole week now. I was going to be here for the next week as well. I'm to Toronto. It's been a very pleasant experience uh, having to hold an umbrella to walk from different places. I have never experienced that. Probably I should have do it more to protect myself from the sun. Just to give you a brief overview, or just to put a, a, a little bit of background of where we are in the state of Arizona. Uh, we're, we're a fairly new state. Uh, we accounted for 6.6 .6 million people with a huge concentration in two metropolitan areas of, of uh, Greater Phoenix area, accounting for 3.7 million, and Southern Arizona that accounts for, give or take, uh, 1.2, 1.3, so as you can see, the concentration is in those areas. Uh, over 70% of the population is right there. Um, uh, fairly densely, not that densely populated, for 58 persons per square mile. So we have a lot of space. Uh, we're set to grow, probably double by 2050. Uh, almost 13, 14 million, depending on, the, on our rate of growth. Uh, just to give you an example as to some of our our major uh, trading partners, obviously our our NAFTA partners are huge for us. Mexico and Canada usually accounting for billions of dollars in trade, and from there on, uh, all of our trading partners just millions of dollars, right? So this is huge importance for us. The, the, this is why our main offices outside of the United States are in Mexico and Canada, obviously. Just to give an example, why we're a little more competitive, uh, not a lot of people will know where Arizona is, but they know where California is. So that's why we use this one. Just to give an example, uh, this uh, e uh, green column here shows you where, wh why we are more competitive in comparison to California. Obviously, we're five hours away by car, there are 40 flights. Uh, there's one flight every half an hour to, to any location. In, in California. So that puts you in a very good spot to access the market as well. We've been relying on these industries for the last 10, 20 years. Aerospace is a huge component of, of, of our high quality jobs. I think that's, a, that's, that's part of what every state wants to do is create high quality jobs for the population. Uh, we've been very lucky and fortunate to have over 700 companies in the aerospace sector. So it's a very strong sector for us, and we're trying to develop uh, other sectors of, of, of interest. So just to give you an, uh, an example, here 700 companies here, around 100 companies here. This one is also very strong, NICT obviously is huge, uh, with, with big presence of Intel, uh, Motorola, et cetera, et cetera. Where we saw, or what we think there's going to be huge opportunities now for especially Canadian companies is in the energy side, in the financial business sector, mining obviously, and engineering construction. As you can see, we are located in a prime spot for solar energy. Uh, this map here shows up the concentration for, uh, or, or the, the power available uh, for, for, for PV solar. Uh, so the redder it is, the better the area is. As, as you can see, we're located in the prime spot. Uh, we don't have a, a, lot of, a lot of rainy days, as you can see there. There's an average of 321 days of sun a year. So we're it. Uh, we're, we're, it's just a resource for us. We have to, we, we have to take advantage of that opportunity that, that it presents. And, and, and not only for consumption in the state, but also for export into, into other markets, such as California, for example. This, this, is, this is another map that shows uh, the, the, the green ones here are transmission lines, if you can see. All the, all the thicker ones go to California. Uh, some of the more Thin ones go to New Mexico. Uh, this is Utah, Nevada, right here. 
So you can see all, all, all these areas of concentration present a very good opportunity for companies to export electricity to a major market, which is California. This is just to give an example of the boom that we had in the last five years. These are, these are all the projects that are going on on solar energy. We have 16 projects. Uh, from all these projects that are, that are announced, uh, this one is one of the biggest ones with 900 megawatts, uh, down to 300 and 280 the Solana generating station. Most of these uh, projects are going to be on CSP solar. Only one or two of these ones are PV. Uh, at the beginning of our expansion on solar, uh, the majority of our, of our utilities chose to go to CSP. Now that we're trying to develop the projects, uh, they come to realize that photovoltaic or PV will be a better option for us, especially because of the high consumption of water on CSP. So you can see a lot of these are located within the same area, and it's because of the transmission lines. Uh, we have a nuclear plant right here. It's called Verde. And I can make this available to you if, if you'd like to have, have, have a copy of it. Well, this is, this is our, 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 our renewal portfolio standard. Uh, our corporation commission is trying to, to promote solar energy in the state. So we have set a goal for ourselves of having 15% of electricity produced by 2025 out of renewable energy. And obviously solar is gonna be a huge component of that. And just to give you a, a, a comparison and what the opportunity is, uh, California's goal is 33% by 2030. This was just raised. It used to be 25 and they, they just lift it up and we think they're gonna to try to increase that one as well. Uh, one of our two largest projects in the state right now is the Solana Generation Station, uh, 280 megawatts. They already broke ground. They're going to start uh, building it. Uh, it's going to be a CSP system uh, by Avengoa Solar, which is a Spanish company. And we have one of the largest PV systems on government land, which is a Loop Force Air Force Base. Uh, Arizona has over 20 different Air Force bases. Because of our weather, there is a lot of training uh, potential there. These two projects are already on their way. This, this is just to show and to give you an idea uh, what the state is being really focusing on, which is creating high quality jobs in the state. And the way uh, the governor and the legislature and all the political leadership have put all of our, our all, all, all their resources and political power into creating uh, incentives, tax incentive programs to attract uh, manufacturing to Arizona and generation as well. So this is just some of the, of the tax credit they've been enacted. Uh, obviously commercial, residential is there also, so it's a huge opportunity, uh, as well as the federal uh, incentives and the one that utilities will provide in their, in, their, in, their, in their local. Our utilities, and we have three main ones, which is uh, APS, uh, which is down in Maricopa County, Yasari Project, which manages also electricity and water, and we have Tucson Electric Power in Southern Arizona. So there's th three main utilities in Arizona. Uh, this is just some background information on on business climate, so I'm gonna skip on that one. We've been ranked one uh, for solar opportunities because of our location and our solar potential, obviously. As you can see, this is just a glimpse. Uh, we, we, we have uh, identified over 100 companies in the, in the renewable energy sector. Uh, you can see some major uh, companies uh, Avengoa is the one that is doing the Solana project. Rio Glass is going to be providing. It's also a Spanish company. Uh, Sterling System has a very nice and new technology that they're deploying in Arizona. Uh, it's just an example of all the companies that we have and all the variations that we have as well. 
Obviously, to have a, a strong industry in this sector, you need a lot of partnerships and a lot of support as well. It's not, it's not only tax incentives, it's not only having the capacity, it is also having good, 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 good resources in the, in the area of research and development. So obviously, Science Foundation Arizona is, is an entity that, that the state has funded. Uh, Science Foundation Arizona right now is putting, uh, give or take, $30 million into research and development around 25% for solar, five, five million for other technologies. Uh, Arizona State University has the Arizona Institute of Renewable Energy, which is a top-notch uh, research laboratory, as well as Southern Arizona University. Arizona has also their own project. So all three universities are really engaged in this, uh, on these efforts on behalf of the state. This is one of the most recent uh, tax credits that, 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 that have been enacted. Uh, this one right here is one of the most aggressive in the United States. Uh, I, I don't think we have any competition when, when it comes to this type of, of, of incentive package, but this is mostly for manufacturing. So we're trying to attract those manufacturers that are going to take advantage and, and, and have, and have a, a good opportunity. As, as a state government agency, obviously, job creation is key for us, and not only job creation, but quality job creation, and we think this is a good industry to do it. Uh, so th this, is, this is the way we're attracting companies, and by providing these this, uh, tax credits, and this can be matched, uh, you know, it can be intermixed, so, so there is huge savings for companies. Uh, this is, this is one also the newest one that we just have been able to pass the legislature, uh, uh, which is for power generation. Uh, it's a $2 million tax credit per facility, which is huge. I don't think any other state has it as well. So we're trying to be extremely, extremely, extremely proactive in trying to promote the industry. Uh, besides generation, we also think there is a big opportunity for commercial projects or rooftops. Uh, for any facility, and this is just some of the examples of the companies that, that are moving uh, towards that, either by saving uh, money, by producing their own energy, or uh, just, just to show that they're being green. Uh, you have the Gateway facility with 500 kilowatt system, Frito-Lay with 201. Uh, also, the, the Arizona State University has enacted a, a, a new program where they have installed these type of systems on the rooftop of, of every structure. Uh, right now, I think they're up to, I think, 30 or 40 megas uh, uh, of capacity. They do it by creating joint ventures with, 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 with developing companies. So mostly, all of the parking facilities are, are now efficient, <laughs> in a way. They, they, they're producing energy uh, day and night. Obviously, there's a huge, huge, huge opportunity for growing the industry. Uh, like I showed you with one of the earlier uh, uh, slides, we're set to grow on double population probably in the next 30 years. So, so there is a huge opportunity here for system integrators that can make uh, all this technology available for for residential use for 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 for, for homeowners, obviously. Uh, this is one of our, our, of our biggest resource uh, that we have in the state right now. The photo will take Test Lab, which is a joint venture. Uh, it used to be only ASU uh, managing the lab, but now there is, a, there, there is a partnership that was signed last year, 2010, by PUB Rhineland Group out of Germany. Uh, I guess a few years ago, we were the only facility uh, being able to certify uh, solar panels. Uh, this is just an example here. This is a solar panel, as you can see there. This is a ball hitting it. This is how they, they take resistance and they, they put it in extreme condition to see how it works. Obviously, we have a secure physical environment. We don't get a lot of rain, right? So this is just one of the, of the Lights that we use for, for, for attraction of business into the state. Uh, we don't have a lot of risk involved with our, our insurance premiums are really, really low. And I think 
Uh, this is just to give you more information or just an idea on all the other incentives that we have. And I think that's about it. expensive uh, for homeowners to have systems on the roof. Uh, right now for a 2,000 square feet house, it, is, it costs about $25,000 for a system. Well, those are very starting to become. Uh, that's why they, they announced all those 25 projects. None of them are, 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 are operating right now. They're all, being, they're, 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 they're all in construction, basically. And I think those ones, since you saw that 900 megas, 200 megas uh, for CSP is extremely expensive. And even, even for photovoltaic. Yes. So in the last year, all the utilities have been able to say, well, these are too big and we didn't wait too much time to have these this, 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 uh, projects go through. So now they've broken them down. They're saying, well, we're going to walk on. 80 megas with a uh, maximum of six. So you have to break it down. And I think that two megas is more manageable and it's easy to finance as well. Yesterday we were talking about how um, uh, integrating into, uh, directly into houses at the construction stage seems like a very uh, attractive uh, thing to do and, and a cost saving thing to do. So it seems like the large uh, uh, predicted uh, Increase in population is a big opportunity. So, have, have developers uh, thought about sort of central um, uh, planning for, for communities that would incorporate solar and other technologies? Yes, yes, definitely. A lot of the new builders are making uh, their houses greener, and they're trying to incorporate the, the, the tiles on the roof with the you know with the solar panels. Uh, I think just the the economy uh, when we were up and in, uh, in, in, in the real estate that we went down. But now all the new ones that are starting to go on the new community because what, what happens is that all the construction stuff, all the new construction stuff, as all real estate went down as well as all, all over the, the, the U.S. So now the new communities are starting to be greener and also the, the governments, uh, local governments, the county governments are trying to promote these tax incentives uh, to make it more attractive for builders to have those already in their houses. Try to build some value out of it, if you will. Whereas Arizona is kind of a land, right? 
Yeah, and, and that's why the utility in the last year have uh, pushed more for PV now. Well, they try to push for PV because they just realized that the usage of water is massive uh, with the CSP projects. And I'm guessing that most of these projects were probably revert and go to PV at, 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 at one point in time. State is fairly easy. Uh, the problem is the environmental ones. It, they get a little bit longer because you have to adhere to all the federal regulation. The good thing is that Arizona, we don't have. Uh, I'm going to use California again. Uh, California has local rules, state rules, and the federal rules. In Arizona, we don't. We don't. We don't. We don't. We don't double regulate. Uh, if there is something regulated by the feds, we don't. You know, we don't touch it. We just go through their system. And that's the one that is taking a little bit longer uh, uh, to get those environmental permits, especially because of the impact studies and all these things. Uh, most of the land available is also state owned. So they have to go and, and, and acquire the land from, 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 our, uh, from our land management uh, agency. That doesn't take as long, but I think the federal component takes a little bit longer. Uh, but I think uh, the biggest hurdle there is the financing right now. We, we, we haven't heard a big issue about the permitting side, uh, but the financing for the projects. And what was the first part of the tour? Uh, just your spare capacity and transmission line for export and your plans to manage that over the next 10 years or so. Transmission lines, it's a, a capacity is a big issue. It's something that um, our, our utilities uh, have been trying to raise the awareness. Uh, right now it's the the, the, the predicament as to who's going to pay for it. Uh, it's infrastructure, we need it. But I think the state uh, right now, because of the current budget situation, they don't want to invest on a line that goes from Arizona to the border of California. Uh, I think in the, last, the last study they did is costing about a million dollars per mile. Uh, so right now, if there is spare capacity, uh, probably going to be able to do something within the next five years. Uh, but a long-term solution has to be there, and it's going to be a matter of who's willing to pay for it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so I presume all your incentives are for uh, feeding the grid. Like it has to affect the grid, public grid, in order to get all those. Um, now, it would be interesting to know what is the power requirement for capita in Arizona today, and you're going to go to 30 million in um, 2025. And what is your uh, estimate or expectations from the public that their demand will be at that time? Just to, give you, just to give you a little bit of a background there, um, we are one of the cheapest state uh, in regards to electricity cost. We're paying around six to seven cents a kilowatt uh, for a regular time. Obviously for us, the issue is on peak times, which is June, July, and August. Those, those, those three months is when we use our air conditioners and it's, you know, the whole state is using electricity 24-7. It doesn't cool up at night. It's extremely hot. Uh, uh, during, during those three months, then when it's a uh, tough consumption and we get the peak time, we're, you know, we're, we're buying electricity uh, at market price. So my electric bill triples or quadruples uh, during those months. So that's when 
that's when it makes it really cost effective uh, to have a solar uh, roof in my house, for example. Uh, the issue is that not a lot of people will have $25,000 to invest in that. Obviously, you have a 25 years of life on that. There is a lot of tax incentives to do it. So that's one of the biggest issues, I think, the cost of the whole system. Uh, there is a benefit there because if I don't use my electricity, I can sell it back. So the meter starts running the other way. Uh, and I think right now the, 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 the buyback for the, for, the, for, the, for the utilities is about a cent from one to three cents. It depends on the timing as well. So whatever I can use, it, it goes back. So it's, you know, it is a good deal. Uh, but I think it's just the, uh, the financing that is not there. You, 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 you have to pay everything up, 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 up hand. Uh, we're relying a lot on nuclear energy. I know it's not, it's not that uh, 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 the favorite right now, but we rely on nuclear uh, and on coal plants. That's, that's, that's the whole plan. That's, that's, that's the goal, to become more efficient and to produce more energy from renewable sources. Uh, to try to, to compensate for all that. And I think that's why all these, all these incentives are there as well. We're, we're putting a lot into it, into, into, into the industry. Uh, to, to promote it, to, to, to attract it and to make it available and cheaper for, for people to use. Incentives in regards to Researches and we'll give you all the information you need for the type of project and industry that it is, and we, we find all the best incentives available, and then we send them to you in a, in a, in a very nice letter. Uh, we can talk if you want uh, on the side, and I can send you information which is specific to 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 uh, just too much information just to give it right now. <laughs> I'll be more than happy to help. <laughs> 